Good afternoon. I'm just adjusting the camera here. There we go. Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 560. Got some fun today. The topic is um, all show or all go. What I realized today at the Jaguar experience about relationship. And I'll break that down in a second and tell you what that was about and what I discovered. I should say what I realized. Before I jump into that, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women and high achieving women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine and every day now for over two years and certainly for just under two years, I've done every day a Facebook Live, yes, Facebook Live, then YouTube later on, I'll tell you about that at the end, um, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 560. And the topic today is going to sound weird, but I want to explain it a little bit. And the topic again is all show or all go. What I learned, what I learned about relationship, I should say, what I, what I learned today out of the Jaguar experience about relationship. I'll probably reword in the title. Um, probably some of the lines of what I learned today about relationship at the Jaguar experience. That makes more sense. So, first, I'll let me tell you what the Jaguar experience was, and then some of my experiences from there, and then how this relates to relationship. You're going to go, what? Bear with me. So, first of all. Um, I got, I got an invitation to this a while back, so I signed up and it got to do it today. And by the way, I'll, I'll tell you then, but basically they're having this, this event today through Sunday, I believe, at the Barker Hangar in Santa Monica. So if you're interested, I put the link on my wall about the information so you can sign up and go yourself. But it, basically this experience we had was first of all going, into the, going in and having a look at all the cars they have, the whole range. The focus really was about the new I-Pace they're announcing, which is the electric car they've got. Um, which I've read a lot about, seen videos about, never seen in the flesh, so to speak, in the metal. Um, but the thing that was a pleasant surprise was, after seeing all the cars and going all the process, there was a chance to get on the road. So they had two things they were doing. One was they are doing test drives of the cars out on the road, and they had a few cars, not just the I-Pace, as well as a closed circuit race amongst cones that you raced around um, to beat a time and distance, and I did pretty damn good in it, actually, with a Jaguar I-Pace, so I got to do both. Because the car I chose to drive on the road, I thought, well, I'm going to have a chance to drive the I-Pace as one of the car I wanted to drive. And I said, really, what I was looking at was, with my head, was driving the I-Pace, because the electric car is the new thing. It's a, it's a crossover. It's a really smart car. But my heart was drawn to the F-Type um, SR model. It's the top of the line. It's the V8 supercharged engine. A two-seater, aluminum, hell of a car. And I went, that's the one, to, one I want to take on the road. And I was not disappointed at all. Um, I've never driven a car like this before. And I've driven some fun cars over the years, but this car set a new benchmark for me. And really was a matter of experiencing, but I want to talk about the, both sides in a moment because I want to explain how this relates to relationships. You're going to go, what's this going to do with relationships? Bear with me. So anyway, so I took the, ja the Jaguar for a drive and the guy was, was guiding me. And he said, you know, do this and this. He had me floor it a few times and had me redline it a few times, which I wasn't expecting. And because he said the way the car's built and the way it runs, it's a very protect, it, it protects itself. The engine basically hits the red line and it has management of the engine so it never actually burns anything out or blows anything out, which is a genius idea because a car engine that doesn't blow up, it's kind of a good thing. Anyway, so we did some serious, serious, um, <laughs> let's just say a couple of times my eyeballs are going back in my head. It was that much speed. It was incredible. This is on surface streets too. So that was an amazing experience. So driving the Jaguar F-Type, um, V8 was beyond my wildest dreams. And then coming back to the, uh, the location, we drove, I get a chance to drive around in, in an, uh, an I-Pace, which is an electric car, around, a, around those things where they have light up cones and GPS. It's really kind of fun, where you basically got to go for the green gate sort of thing, and you've got to chase it around the circuit. That was a hell of a lot of fun too. Out of about 250 people, I came fourth, I think. So it wasn't bad. Um, it was quite an experience. Actually, I came 14th, but the top 10 were actually the pro drivers that drive the time, drive all the time. So I did pretty good for an amateur. Anyway, so what's it got to do with relationship, you might be thinking? Well, first of all, there was these two um, opposites in a way. There was the beautiful, fast, um, I can say this in a nice way, a beautiful, fast car that was really fun to drive, but has no storage. It's only a two-seater, but boy, is it a fun car to have on the weekends. The other car is fully electric, so it doesn't require any fossil fuel. It seats four, has a, tr has a trunk in the back and the front, 
and it goes like the clappers too. In fact, torque-wise, in fact, there's a little more torque on that than there is on the Jaguar, on the uh, F-Type, the Jaguar, they're both Jaguars. And the reason I'm saying is because there's a spectrum and a range. And the thing is, we look at relationships sometimes for only one thing. And, and I'm saying this particularly because I've been going through this myself. So I'm being transparent here. I've been very much aware of what I'm noticing about women being a single man. Yes, I'm single. And what draws me in. And it's not just, sometimes it is like, whoa, she's a hot looking woman. And that's just transparent. I'm just going to say this is what happens. I notice women because I'm a guy and I'm straight and I'm single. And I'm like, I, I notice women. But the other part is also I notice what draws me in is something deeper, which I can't even know if I put the finger on. There's a feeling I have when I meet somebody where I go, she's great, attractive. And there's something else that I'm looking for, that, that mystery ingredient, so to speak. And the thing is for me is that looking at these two cars side by side, there were pluses and minuses in both of them. And so when we're making choices in relationships, we might be running a list of that's better, that's worse, that's worse, that's better, and, and have this perspective. And the truth is it's okay to feel this way. So before you jump in like, shouldn't do that, it's wrong in this It's like, no, it's okay to feel this. In fact, if you don't feel it, I'd be concerned. Having the understanding that there's a variation of choices out there, a freedom to choose that you get to honor, that you get to respect, and ultimately you get to choose from is such a simple thing but a lot of times we go no well, I should do this or I don't want to do that and for me what I've become clear about is I've been ooh okay I'm gonna say that I guess I would say I've been playing safe to a degree in terms of my um, meetings of women I've actually not necessarily approached women I would love to meet up and talk to because I had doubts about meeting them because I don't know if I trusted myself or felt it whatever it was and what I'm clear about is that I'll never know what it's like if I don't do something like that. So I'm speaking for myself that I'm stepping up. I have to take a deep breath on that one. As I'm stepping up to speak to more... Um, I'm going to be careful I phrase this. I want to say like it's not derogatory. But women who I find maybe beyond what I think is okay for me. Because I have my own upper limits I hit. And if you're in the place where that's going on for you, if you're a woman or a man, where you think you're hitting an upper limit where you can meet out there in a relationship because you're not sure if you can have it or deserve it or have it or... Um, manage it because the thing was this is the thing when I mentioned driving that Jaguar F-Type it was an exhilarating experience beyond my words in a way but the thing was is that I felt myself able to it's almost like I've never driven a car like that before I've driven lots of cars and I haven't driven lots of cars lately but I've, I've driven some pretty fun cars this car is a quantum leap above in terms of performance and I was doing some pretty silly things because the guy was guiding me to in a way that I would not have normally have done but I felt, I won't say comfortable, because it wasn't comfortable by any means, but I felt trusting of myself in the experience. And this applies to relationships too. I'm gonna to say it strangely as it sounds, it does. Because a lot of times we wanna go into a relationship where we feel comfortable and it's easy. And sometimes we're not willing to go to a relationship that might stretch us into a new level of ability and experience. And I'm a believer in life as being a journey we grow into and we step into. And sometimes it's the willingness to go beyond our comfort zones, just ask things. Now, here's the thing. That car did not reject me. <laughs> if you're out dating the world, you might find yourself asking women if you're a woman, if you're a man who's straight, or asking men if you're a woman who's straight, although ideally you're inviting versus, versus asking, that they may say no. And you've got to be willing to be okay with that because part of this journey of experience is not going to get a yes every time. There's a certain level of willingness to accept the no because part of it is one you get, get really clear that when you get a no and this is a rejection exercise talked about this before when you get to a place of being told no what's happened is nothing changed so you may be going oh my god I get rejected well the truth is you just didn't get what you asked for so you're still the same as you were before so reality and this is a big one for a lot of people is if you get someone says no to you for what you want if you don't change what happened as in you're still where you were you're absolutely fine there's nothing wrong because yes you didn't get what you wanted but if you built a lot of stuff into that vision of what you wanted and didn't happen then you got to work on backing out of that but if you simply asked out of curiosity and you thought well I'll ask anyway and they say no you're in a place of going okay you don't fight over it you don't you don't uh, pledge your case you don't believe you don't belittle them you don't argue with them you don't deny them or any of that stuff you just go okay because what comes back to you is you're still with yourself as you were now, I talked about this yesterday about how after breakup, self-love is a key piece. 
part of getting comfortable with being rejected is you've got to be able to love yourself enough that when it happens, it doesn't kill you. Because some people live and die by rejection. And it's not ideal. And part of that is because those people, not you, but those people, are caught up in a paradigm where they must get certain things to be validated. And the challenge with that is you're living on a, uh, a borrowed opportunity where you're actually leaning on somebody else's yes, which is not promised. And that can be a very painful experience. So I'm really saying this clearly, that building up your own self-support, self-love, self-appreciation, self-care means that when somebody says no, you don't take it personally. Because the truth is, it isn't personal. It's their judgment about themselves, perhaps, and they might not like the way, way you present yourself, but that's their opinion, not yours. So the key thing I wanna make sure you get clearly is you are okay if someone rejects you. And as a reminder, the self-love practice I've been talking about yesterday and today is a practice I recommend because what it does is it helps you build up your own self-support muscle. So when you're feeling that love and that support in yourself, if someone says no, you go, okay. You do not take it personally because you are actually filled up from within. And so whatever they do or don't do doesn't affect that. Because relationships should be from the overflow, not from a sense of lack. And when you fill up your own tanks, your own fuel, your own heart, your own loving first, then rejection or acceptance is, is neither here nor there. Yes, it'd be nice to have acceptance, but if you get rejected, it's like, it's not what I wanted, but it's okay. And that may be the biggest lesson of this. So the other thing I was gonna say, because I was trying to do a comparison thing, is there are pros and cons of, of any relationship. So when you make a choice of a partner, be very clear of what the pros are and what the cons are, what the positive, what the negatives are. And when you get clear about the things that are negative that are actually deal breakers, that's when you know you gotta stop that you won't be able to go into that relationship if there's too many of those. You may have things that don't work, like that that F type I talked about. It really isn't a car I'd want, I'd want to own. I'd love to drive it occasionally because it's so much fun, but it's not functional. It wouldn't actually support me in relationship in, in my driving in a relationship with it in that sense. Whereas a car like the I-Pace, which is much more capacious, more usable, and also not using gasoline, would be more effective, but I would yearn for the Jaguar. So how does that apply to relationship, you might be thinking? Sometimes it's worth understanding that the relationship you choose may not be there for the long haul. It may not be something you can actually embody for the rest of your life, perhaps. But are you willing to explore and find out for yourself so you know that you've actually done that? Because the thing is for me is, having driven that car, I don't have to drive it again. I would love to, but I don't have to because I've exercised that experience. I've had that exploration. I've actually enjoyed what it feels like to be there. And sometimes in relationships, you can actually enjoy the feeling of being with somebody and then realize after a period of time, it's like, okay, I'm done. I got what I, I, I've got the experience, I know what it's like, I don't need that anymore. And for some people, choosing a relationship that is so far outside their framework just to experience it, maybe it's just because the person looks so amazing, you've never had that before. But when you get, after a period of time, you go, you know what, they don't look so special anymore. Because that's the thing about relationships with somebody who's amazing looking, over time, looks change. We start seeing people differently. So that part can shape as well. I'm not sure if this made sense, I hope it did. But the rejection piece, I wanna make sure you get that point, is that when you ask somebody out and they say no, it's okay. Because nothing changed for you. You didn't have it before, you didn't have it after. Move on, it's that simple. So if that's one of the biggest lessons you can get from this, and it's one of the lessons I've learned, good. And again, I'll put the link to the self-love practice in the comments, you can definitely check it out and get it yourself. And also, as quick reminders, I'll tell you about my replays. This is my, my daily Facebook Live, as I said, 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. I'll be doing it again tomorrow, so tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, same time, same back channel. Uh, the replays of my broadcast, my Facebook Live goes onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then after that, I put it onto my YouTube channel. The channel is called Barry Selby, as all my social media is. You please subscribe to the channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. If you watch them, you watch them all there. And also eventually they're getting into my podcast, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. Subscribe to that and I'll be putting the links up there. I'll putting the replays up there as well so you can listen to the audios when you're driving and traveling around doing things we can't look at the phone. And that, I think, is that. If this brings up any questions or thoughts for you, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. And I thank you for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow, um, yes, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I wish you well. Take care of yourself. Bye.